but uh, how y'all doing out there? This is Pete. Uh, we're over at uh, DIY Auto School today, and what I'm doing is I'm doing the bodywork on the left side of this 1976 um, Mercedes Benz. Now, this is a concourse restoration, meaning that it was put on a rotisserie and major, major bodywork and rust repair has been done to this vehicle. Let's look at the other side of the car and then we're going to get on with what we're here for. Welcome to DIY Automotive School with my friend Pete and Minnie the Body Shop Girl. It's everything you need to know about cars and more. So once again, this was a major, major restoration job, and you can kind of see by what's going on over here, all the body work that needed to be done to it, um, and we're not talking all the rust repair. Right now, we're just talking body work only. So the body work on this car was very, very extensive. Now before I did any filler work, which we will call it Bondo, I did a lot of hammer and dolling and also um, shrink disc, I use my shrinking disc on it, uh, my slap hammers, my dollies, and everything that I needed to get the bodywork to be the least filler as possible. So you can see this is a very extensive and very, very uh, time consuming job, what we're looking at right here. So what I'm going to try to do and try to explain to you, and this also applies not just to automotive restoration, but also automobile collision, paint and body. If you're a body man, or you want to be a body man, and you want to get into um, the experience of restoring cars or possibly doing paint and body work and collision repair, there's two air tools that you should own. Now you can throw all the other air tools you got away. But when it comes to body work, there's only two main air tools that you need. And that's what we're going to discuss today, is what air tools do I need to purchase to do professional body work and to do it right. So we're talking body work today. We're talking applying our Bondo, applying our filler, and how we're going to remove it and remove it properly and do a quick job. Now, everybody knows that to do a professional job, it requires a lot of hand sanding. You're going to use a lot of hand blocks, you're going to use your hand, you're going to use uh, flex blocks, hard blocks, soft blocks, and, and to do it the right, right way and to get it accurate, yes, it's going to take a lot of hand sanding to do that. That means we're not going to use air tools. But your initial body filler, your initial breakdown, your initial sand job is going to require that you have an air tool. And the air tool that we're talking about, and I'm going to tell you about two of them, you can let all the other ones go. But there's two main air tools that you need, and you can see them right here behind me. And we're going to go over them, and I'm going to be specific on each one. So the first one we're going to talk about is our air file. This is a high production, high quality, professional air file. This is made by a company called Viking. This is not a Harbor Freight air file. This is not a Lowe's or Home Depot air file. This is not a Chicago Matic air file. This is a Viking. I have owned this air file for approximately 20 years. 
I have four to five of them, four, four to six. This is the best one made. It's very expensive and it works very accurately. This is the only air file that I found that will break it down precisely and accurately and continuously as a production tool that I need in my shop. The paper that you use on this particular air file is a stick-on style paper, all right? And I believe this is 16 inches long. This is a 16 inch air file. The maintenance that is required on this air file is that you should go ahead and oil it daily. Now on this particular air file, there's a little oiler right here. All right, you can see that. But I never oil it there. What I do is I go ahead and I, I put four to five drops of oil inside the air inlet. And then that will oil it thoroughly. Now you can see by looking at my air file, I use my air file a lot. Alright, this is approximately a $200 to $300 air tool. One thing that you do not ever want to do with your air file is you never want to move the pad up and down or you never want to run the air tool while you're holding it like this. Alright, you see a lot of guys, they'll go, bap, bap, and they'll have the air hose, they'll go, bap, 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 bap. That's the worst thing you can do to this air tool, especially being the cost that it is. What happens is there's gears underneath this pad and inside, underneath on the bottom, there's gears and there's tracks that this has to line up on. It looks like a train track in there. And if those gears and tracks are misaligned, it'll lock up your air file. And if you do not know how, to put all that, but take it apart and put it back together, your air file will be ruined. Or you'll have to ship it to the company and have them completely rebuild it, which will cost you approximately 125 bucks. So this tool right here is our number one tool that we will need to do major body work, minor body work, any type of body work that we need to do where we have to apply Bondo, I'm going to call it Bondo, we're not going to get politically correct here and say filler, okay, it's Bondo, that's what it is. You can sit there and say Bondo is a brand, I don't give a shit what you say. To me, this is Bondo, all right? When you're using your air file, you can use multi-grades of sandpaper on that air file. The pad on this air file should be replaced every year. The reason I say that is because the pad will start to wear out, it'll start to cup, and it will not be a super flat surface that we need to do precise body work on our Bondo. So the pad on this should be replaced every year. Matter of fact, I got a new pad over there. Let me go get it. I'm going to show you exactly what we're talking about. What you're looking at right here, this is an air file pad. Okay? This is a brand new one that I have purchased. I replace my air file pads once a year. And the brand that we have right here is a 3M stick it pad. Now, I'm not too fond of this type of a pad, but this is the only one that I can find online at a reasonable price. If we look at the pad that's on the air file, you can see that this one has a texture to it and it's black. This one does not have a texture 
and it's perfectly surfacely flat. Now this pad is a good pad to use, but if you're doing a production line bodywork or major bodywork like we're doing on this, that pad right there, that pad surface is the best surface to use. Like I said, I bought this one because it was 10 to $15 cheaper and it still works very well. I'm just fond to this one more than this one. So this is a 3M Stick It air file pad that you can purchase online or possibly at your local paint and body shop supply store. Um, to buy these it would be cheaper to buy online. This air file, Viking air file, you can buy this on eBay and I suggest to buy it straight from the factory not a third party because if you buy this from the factory you have warranties buying it from a third party you ain't got nothing so if you want a high quality tool that is going to last you many many years I've had this for 20 years this will be your main body shop tool that you will use when it comes to this it's called an air file I suggest that you get the most high quality one you can purchase and to me the Viking brand air file is the best. A lot of people like Hutchins. I don't like Hutchins. I have a Hutchins. I'm going to go get it to prove to you that I have Hutchins air tools. It's that time. It's time to subscribe. Click the bell. Do yourself a favor and comment as well. Because there's only one thing that's going to make you happy as a pig. And you know what that is? Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Do it now. Do it now. And you'll be sitting pretty. Just like this big fat pig. <laughs> oh, yeah. mm. What you're looking at right here, this is a Hutchins brand air file. If you get online and look up Hutchins Air File, it's going to be identically exactly just like this. I bought this air file brand new. I bought this air file 30 years ago, brand new. 30 years ago, this air file was $250. I don't know how much they cost now. Possibly $400. At the time, and still possibly today, Hutchins Air Tools are considered the number one air tool for doing bodywork and restoration, collision repair. My personal opinion is this is not a production line air file. This is a finish air file. This air file does not break it down as much as our Viking. It's not as precise. This is more of a finish air file that you would use possibly 80 grit on or 120. If you want something that's going to last and work forever, the Viking air file is the choice of air files, not the Hutchins. Plain and simple. So now we're going to talk about the second and final most important air tool that you should have in your toolbox. Okay, that should be part of your uh, arsenal, you might say. Can I go ahead and say that word, arsenal? Okay? Don't want to be politically correct, but that's what we're talking about here. Is this air file right here. Now this is not a finish air, this is not a finish sander. I'm sorry, I said air file. I'm talking DA sander, dual action, dual orbital. Okay, this is an orbital dual. I'm going to show you. Do you see that in there spinning? Okay, that's one. And then that's two. So this is a dual action orbital sander. But this is a long throw. Now what I'm saying is there's a difference. There's a short throw and there's a long throw. The long throw is not a finished sander. The long throw is a Bondo breakdown mold. Get it down to where you want it and do your body work type sander. This is a production line DA sander. I purchased this and I have two or three of these. I purchased this probably 
30 years ago, and it still is like brand new. Now, there are parts that will wear out on your sander that need replaced. And the main part is if you look right inside here, where my finger is pointing, that shaft, okay, and I can feel this one's just a little bit loose. That shaft, okay, that shaft is what goes out on these. Now, this company is still in business, or it was bought out by Dynabraid. This is called National Detroit. This is the number one standard DA sander in the world. This sander right here, you can use everything from 36 grit all the way to 320. Now, before they came out with the palm hand sanders, okay, the short throw, and let me go get one and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, I got one right here. This is a finished short throw palm sander. Now, what the difference is here is this one, I don't know if you saw the throw on this. Let me go ahead and show you that one more time. Okay, when I'm talking the throw, I'm talking about this right here. You can kind of see, you can kind of see how, how it throws itself. Okay, it's offset. It throws itself. It's a long throw. See that? Bam, bam, bam. All right. And when we take this one, you can barely even turn it. Because this is a short throw finish sander. We're not talking about that today. That's not one of the most important air tools we need. But this one is. Because this is a production tool that's going to last you years and years and years. And it's also going to do this job. And it's also going to do this job. When I say this job, I'm breaking this down. This is my first layer of Bondo. I don't want that on there. What am I going to do? I'm going to take my long throw. I'm going to pull off the 80 grit. Okay, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to put a piece of 36 grit on there. And now I'm going to form and mold my bodywork with a DA, long throw DA sander. Do you, am I making sense here? And then I can come back, and once I got all my body work done, I can put some 180 on this sander right here, and I can quickly go over that to get all the deep scratches out, and it is primer ready. So out of all the tools that you might own, these here, these two tools right here that you're looking at, are the most important tools that you will ever purchase. Don't be a cheesecake. Don't buy cheap. Don't buy deals. Get the professional, high-quality situations to do the job right. Because when it comes to these two air tools right here, you get what you pay for. If you buy a cheap, inexpensive, non-precise air file that is not made for high quality repairs, you are going to do cheap, inexpensive junk work. If you go to the big box corporation outlet store such as Lowe's or Home Depot and you buy the $25 air file, uh, DA sander, that's what you're going to get. A $25 cheap, inexpensive, junky, crappy job. Trust me. Always remember one thing when it comes to paint and body work. Your prep work is your paint job. All the way from the beginning to the end, if you do not have the proper tools to do the job, you are wasting your time and sticking it in your own ass. This is Pete, my friend Pete, your friend Pete, showing you and telling you the most important air tools that you will ever own in your toolbox and telling you the toolbox should be full of precise, accurate, and high quality tools that you can use to your benefit. Never say it's paint ready. 
because it never is until the job's done right. Take it easy. We'll see you later. Please leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about these air tools. And if you own an air, a Viking uh, air file, or possibly you might own both of them, which is the Hutchins. If you own one of these, give me your opinion on which one you think is the best and which one you would purchase. And if you have a DA sander and you use the short throw doing body work, let me know. I want to know that. And I want your opinion on what you think of owning a high quality industrial sander versus the cheap, inexpensive one. My friend Pete, your friend Pete, right here at DIY Auto School, working and showing you how to do it right. Because if you're not doing it right, you'll never do it at all. Take it easy.